That blood reminds me so much of the Red Seas from Deadly Premonition. I cannot it's so bad. Now moving into this final phase of the story, I want you to keep a certain phrase in mind. Raiden said, Earthrealm is free of Shao Kahn forever. Right? It's a very important detail to keep in mind for the way the story develops. Shao Kahn's alive, and Setsu and Cyrax are here. For some reason. Kintaro isn't, but Kintaro's not dead. And it's like, all Khan's alive because, because of, of Quan Chi. Outworld can no longer merge with Earthrealm. How is it? There may yet be it's not Shang Tsung's fault, Khan. You fucking invasion. fuck up. Uh, Again, I'm gonna have to cover this a lot more in the actual review. But Jesus me? fuck. Sindel's ward prevents me from setting foot in Earthrealm. <laughs> you considered why your wife I love how he's got these burns on his chest, but the straps that cover that part, which obviously would have been burned through by Liu Kang's attack. Millennia, her motives are a mystery. That's been recovered. She realized that the safeguards afforded and of course, Quan Chi knows everything about um, Sindel's, the reason Sindel uh, killed herself. The elder gods could not. So <laughs> yeah, because Sindel can it. offer protection for Earthrealm, the elder gods can't. The elder gods, these all-powerful beings. Also, Khan's helmet is, is restored. And with it, the barrier that prevents... And Quan, so Quan Chi's here and he's like, yeah, I'm the one who resurrected Sindel. Like, fuck right off. I will not having that. He's complete bollocks. Cause Quan, again, Quan Chi's been forced into a story that he had nothing to do with, and it's like he is a super competent guy who knows everything, does everything, super important to the story. When he wasn't even in the original trilogy, like it should have been Shang Tsung doing this stuff. Prove your worth. Bring her to me. See, the effects kind of decent, but there are also certain flaws with were uh, with with this. Resurrection scene. Fucking phone. And like Sindel, um, you, you saw how like the muscles for her breast were forming. Like, and there's nothing underneath it. it was, the effect isn't that great. So th this is another key part of a uh, Quan Chi. His mind control gimmick. It's like, oh, because Sindel was under mind control throughout MK3. Take me to Shao Kahn. But now it's like, oh no, Quan Chi's one did it because that's his gimmick now. I mean, it makes him more distinct from Shang Tsung, but still. Also, Noob is here, and that is another thing I need to touch on in the actual review. What's this? Have we, have we transitioned to Call of Duties? Now, this is just the invasion, which. It's been shown more so than it was originally. But I just find it funny that Tarkat... Wait, all, all the Tarkatans have guns. I'm going to say I find it funny that, that these guys with guns are losing to Tarkatans, but Tarkatans have guns. 15, 16, 17, 18, it's kind of funny how there was a big... There was a, there was a, come on, call it in. There was a plot Eagle point two, where 18, Kano 18, was giving these South weapons to Shang Tsung for the invasion, presumably, but the invasion wasn't planned back then. He just gave them these weapons that they didn't make use of. I mean, unless the idea was that uh, they're supposed to use the weapons when they came to enforce Shao Kahn's rule in Earthrealm, which Khan had already won, I guess. But yeah, this is an interesting thing. We have Curtis Striker and Cabal. And that's interesting because, because Cabal originally uh, is a member of the Black Dragon. Wait, what? Oh, was it just the tongue? Enough of this. It's you and me, freak show. Now the great part about this is that I do actually have my guns. I have all my weapons. Yeah, I, I so Cabal was originally just a member of the Black Dragon who would who like try to uh, get away from the Black Dragon before they were like, no, let's just have him form a new Black Dragon. Which isn't like like Sub Zero who reformed the Link Way to be a good force. It's let's just have Cabal reform the Black Dragon as a force of evil because some guy saved him and made him do it. I do quite like this like this one though. The next way move. 
Yeah, Strike is an interesting character because Strike was a character that nobody liked. Like he's been introduced in MK3, hence why he's only shown up now. But then again, that didn't stop him from including Nightwolf earlier. But look, Striker had this long history where he was supposed to show up in the series. Like he was supposed to be in um, MK1, but they realized they didn't have any women, so they uh, replaced him with Sonya Blade. Then he was going to be in MK2, but they renamed him to Jax. So Jax was going to be Striker as well. And then they finally put Striker into MK3. But he was just some like really stupid cop guy. He didn't have the SWAT gear. He had like, just had like a t-shirt and, and like pants on. And basically nobody likes Striker in MK3. Partly because his moves actually quite cheap, and as I can show you here, if I could get his moves set, uh gunshot right. I see. Okay. Damn it. See, this is this is the this it's this kind of shit that made people not like Striker initially. So they didn't bring it back to Armageddon when they were basically obligated to do so. And once they brought him back, um, people still didn't like him. They tried to reinvent him as a, like a, a special agent type appearance. Sticking out your tongue. But no one liked him. Bet your mom is real even bad. then. So then they brought him back for uh, this game because again they had to. Come on. And they reworked him. So that now he's more like Leon S. Kennedy, which is fitting because the voice actor here, Matthew uh, Mercer, is Leon S. Kennedy now. Though this game did come out a year for for Resident Evil 6, so I'm not sure if he'd been announced as the voice of Leon yet. I don't know, but he, he, it's possible that he was working on he's playing Leon before then. What do you think, friend or foe? Foe. Dress like that? Definitely foe. Cover me. See, and I, I do like Cabal's uh, arc in this game, but it's still a bit weird. And look, look, Striker's got that gun which he doesn't actually have in the game. I don't hey, think he even has it for a finisher. <laughs> Looking for a new playmate. Round one. Fight. Damn it! Black blast. Yeah, and people just driving around. Just Ignoring everything. I do like this reinvention of the uh, the bridge stage. Because most, most of the stages are just reinventions of, of one from the first three games. So I do really like the, this version because of all the devastation. Also, you may notice in the background, Boone Street. I think the other one's from like Tobias Avenue or something. Because, of course, Ed Boone, John Tobias. And this is the thing where it's actually... Those two streets are actually canon to the series already, because in the subway stage from MK3, which also appears in this game, there are there are signs pointing in, in two directions for Boone and I believe Tobias. Yeah, I'm just, it's just so easy to spam a striker. It's just way too easy. Take that, take that, you fiend. I'm not, I'm not sure about that kick though, it looks kind of lame. But again, it might have actually, it might have had that in MK3, which if he did, that would explain it as like a little reference to that. Yeah, his swag gear here makes, makes him look like more like a solid snake. So it's like, it's, it's, it seems that they may have been inspired by characters like Snake and Leon when they're designing this version of Striker. Get wrecked. I love how Melina has changed back to her, her other outfit. Instead of the one she was wearing uh, during the cutscenes at the end of the MK2 section. Though well, it could indicate that Melina um, has this as her combat gear. Which is something that you don't really see otherwise. And Raiden doesn't kill her. He just shocks her. Then she, then she disappears. And I'm not sure when she appears again. You alright? He just had a vision. Johnny Cage fighting a giant monster. It, it's not what a giant monster, it's a centaur. <laughs> See, that's that's this hilarious, like but that's kind of the, the catalyst for the entire yeah. ending of the game. No idea. It's <laughs> intensely stupid, the entire right finale. Give targets. This bit's stupid as well. <laughs> I 
And Striker does nothing to help him. And Kintaro, I don't think Kintaro actually has fire breath. If he does, it's just a fireball. But the whole thing about Motaro is, I, you, don't, you don't see it here for whatever reason, but uh, if you actually go back through all the, the previous uh, flashbacks Raiden had right at the start of the game, one of them does show Johnny Cage being impaled by Motaro with a spear. You see, the, there's a whole thing where Johnny Cage's original actor from MK1 and 2, when they're using digitized actors, um, Dan Pacina, th I think it was. Yeah, there's a the fireball. He um, actually appeared in an advert for another fighting game in the Johnny Cage costume without permission from Midway. So he got fired. And so Johnny Cage didn't appear in MK3. And so for like a, I think it was like a radio advert that they did for the game. It's basically meant to be a funeral for Johnny Cage, which is a eulogy being given by Raiden and claim that he was killed by uh, Kintaro in MK2. Though this game changes that, of course. Um, I'm not really sure why, but that's the idea. I mean, he, Johnny already loses in the MK2 tournament in this game anyway, to Ermac. So they could have just used that instead. Which is really, really just an excuse to remove Motaro from the story because he's hard to make work in a 3D game. You have to animate all the legs. So. The cheat, the SEA has given two legs in Armageddon. Yeah, in Armageddon he's only got two legs instead of the three. Which is dumb, but at least he was playable. Here he's not at all. So it's a way of removing him from the equation. Look, it's Space Wizard Ermac. Such a great design. And watch this. Now, let's keep in mind, Striker's a normal, Striker's just a normal guy. Is it on his head? I'm pretty sure. And he's fine. But yeah, anyway, so Johnny Cage was killed off in the story of MK3 and came back in MK4, leading to this whole running gag about Johnny Cage dying and coming back. Which is kind of ironic yeah. nowadays, but anyway. Um, bloody hell, what, what point was I trying to make? Yeah, so that's the idea. That that's how Johnny Cage uh, is, is revealed to have died in the original timeline now. Killed by Moltarum. Yeah, you can't even say it's changed because of Raiden, because Raiden has a vision of it. So that's obviously how it happened originally. I mean, they could have easily just had Space Wizard Ermac here do it, and Ermac's one of the toughest characters to beat. So I'm just going to spam my gun, if that's alright with you guys. So I'll continue regaling you with my tales of OG canon and how they've fucked it all up in this game. Where, where Johnny Cage... Um, I, the idea is that, so there's the idea that Raiden saves him with a hilarious little sound effect from the classic days, which actually makes it all more awkward when you realise exactly what the implication of that whole sequence is. Also, I do not like this Netherrealm Studios thing being in the background because the rep, that means that there will be a retcon and it's that Netherrealm Studios existed back when the original MKs were being made. Which, if one assumes that the games are set in a set around the years they, were, they came out, this will be about 95. And Netherrealm did not exist until about 2010, maybe 2009. That's not a serious gripe, that's just taking the piss to entertain you guys while I try and gun Ermac down, but he finds a way around all my fucking gunshots because he is he is he is the error macro. He is he, he is supposedly glitch personified, which he's actually not. It's just a it's, it's just a misconception about Ermac existence. People believed he was a glitch, but he actually wasn't. Why can Ermac teleport now? What the fuck? That's bullshit. Also, I love how Ermac's in-game voice is nothing like uh, his dialogue voice. When you've got like, a ethereal effect added to Michael McConaughey's voice. Some, there's some odd casting changes, though, with, with this game. Like, the cast is mostly the same as MK vs. DCU, but... For some reason, they didn't have Patrick Sykes re return to Shao Kahn. He's Scorpion in this, but not Khan. I mean, in vs. DC, it was, it was Scorpion, Shao Kahn, and Deathstroke. Motherfucker. You bastard. Whoa! Oh, suck the balls. See, this is what this, this, this is the thing about that. Ermac, I, Ermac's so overpowered. It's fucking retarded. Oh my god, stop it. 
Strike is supposed to be the, the cheap motherfucker. Fucking bullshit! It's complete bollocks. I hate Ermac. Round one. See, I used to like Ermac, like back in Deception, when he had a really cool character arc about being redeemed and helping uh, Liu Kang to save his friends. But hey, no, fuck off. You just. You're just a bad character, Ermac. See, this is the thing, like, I, you can't really probably defend against a character who teleports. Not to a reasonable degree. Come on, you bastard. Boosh. And of course, the characters don't step back in this one after a round to get some distance between the two characters. I'm not sure how many fighting games do that. I mean, a lot of them. I think a lot of them just just, uh, just reset the whole the whole setup between rounds. <sighs> I'm, I'm trying to f figure out if I should go for the X-ray or not. Because if I go for the X-ray. It might put things on. It should put things on much more even ground. But at the same time, it's like I'd, it'll probably just block it. See, like what the fuck, right? See, he's got this, this like direct move, which I've heard it's some like you meant to do like a low block, a summer. But I'm not. I, I just don't. I just don't don't know how to defend against uh, Max move. I think I'll be keeping my soul. Yeah, good one. I have been searching for you, Curtis Stryker. Why? Well, you found me. Who are you? I am Nightwolf. Lord Raiden is gathering Earth's defenses. Yeah. You are a Nightwolf is super important in this uh, portion of the story. I don't know why. I mean, he was yeah, at the well, tournament, but he, he didn't come back. He didn't come back for the MK2 portion. Like, what the fuck was he doing? See, Striker's excuse that he didn't know anything about it, but Nightwolf was at the tournament. He was an active participant. He knows about all this stuff, and yet he doesn't get involved. What? Where is he? Medivac hasn't been here. Perhaps. He's yeah, Cabal's right just now. gone missing. He was way too banged up. Someone took him. It's 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 dumb. 